uh, welcome delegates and the um, internationally uh, acclaimed speaker who is going to talk to us now, um, Dr. Vignesh Raja, and welcome Dr. Jagdish Rana, who is the uh, co-chairperson, and we are awaiting uh, Umesh might join. And thank you very much. It's a great honor and privilege to be presenting at the annual meeting of the KSOS. Let me just uh, share my slide. So can you see my slide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's, it's fine. Yeah. So today I'll be talking on uh, artificial iris implantation techniques. You know, um, initially in my practice, I, I used to think there was no role for this, you know, uh, because we could always get away with pupilloplasties or, you know, uh, or iris resuturing. But then confronted with a couple of blunt eye injury and uh, penetrating eye injury patients, I thought there is a, certainly a role for artificial iris in, in uh, post-trauma reconstruction of these eyes. So what I've been using is a human optics uh, artificial iris uh, made by the company of the same name, you know, the human optics, which is a bio, biocompatible silicone polymer. And this is foldable. Uh, it comes in a total diameter of about 12.8 millimeters, and it's got a fixed pupillary aperture of 3.35. So it comes in, uh, the, the artific artificial iris comes in two models. One is a fiber-free model, and another one is uh, 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 with fiber. So the fiber-free model is mainly for either the sulcus placement or capsular bag placement. You can place it in the sulcus or within the capsular bag, and you can do it through a sutureless implantation through a, a normal phaco wound of about 2.8 to 3 millimeters. And it comes with an injector that you can inject as well. And to place it in the sulcus or uh, the capsular bag, we have to, the size that we have to refine this to is about 9.5 to 10 millimeters. And if we are placing in the sulcus, we have to do an iridotomy, with, uh, you know, which we can do with the scissors. But uh, with the model with fiber is for is uh, is used for suturing it to the sclera with or IOL with sutures because it has a fiber uh, you know fiber meshwork to increase the strength. This is not injectable, so we got to fold it, and the wound size is about three point five to four millimeters. And for the sizing of this, we have to measure the white to white of the cornea and minus zero point five millimeters from that so that it, it uh, to prevent buckling of the material so that and it's nice and stretched out and uh, and covers the pupillary margin nicely and you can either use ninoproline or gotex sutures so the iris can be implanted either in the bag in the sulcus or scleral fixation with gotex or polypropylene i prefer to use gotex sutures because uh, you, you don't want late breakages with the polypropylene later on or you can also use an iris uh, IOL complex fixation using Gore-Tex or the Yamane technique. I have a few videos to uh, show all of you, so let me go on to these videos. Okay, and all these are post-trauma eyes. So this is a case where this patient's got, uh, you know, uh, the, this is his fixed dilated pupil like this uh, with the dense cataract. And, you know, the, I thought the pupil was too big to do any pupiloplasty because this is the normal size of the pupil, even undilated. It's, this is this is the pupil. And he's got a dense cataract there. You know, here I'm planning to implant the capsule it's in, in the capsule bag. So you don't want to make it too big nor too small because as you get capsular phimosis, then uh, you don't want it to buckle the material. So I'm using a Callisto guided 5.5 millimeter you know, uh, rexis so that uh, we can we can get a nice circular rexis to implant it in the bag. I'm, uh, I, I still do good old divide and conquer or stop and chop. I'm not a, a fancy chopping surgeon. So, uh, so I, I proceed with straightforward cataract surgery. As you can see, the caps, the cataract is, is, is quite dense. I just sped up the video because uh, in, in India, I'm sure we do much more complex cataract surgeries than these. So, you know, I'll cut to the chase straight uh, right, right now. So all we need to do is a nice uh, thorough IA with cortical cleaning and then uh, we prepare the bag for lens implantation. So 
So here we fill the bag nicely with viscoelastic. And to stretch the bag, you, are, you put a capsule tension ring because you want the bag to be to stay as, as expanded as possible. So I've injected the capsule tension ring and here goes the toric uh, intraocular lens. So you can see the rexus margin overlapping uh, the, uh, the lens now. And here is the fiber-free artificial iris. So this comes in standard brown, uh, in a standard brown color, or you can make it custom made uh, co compared to the patient, you know, compared to the patient's fellow eye. So here's a trifine. So you press with the with the trifine with the Mufield's forceps on the top so that you get a nice ring all around. And here I'm, I'm injecting, you know, the other side of the iris uh, prosthesis is just dark black in color. So here I'm injecting it into the injector. And I'm expanding the capsule bag nicely. I'm just making a second side port so that I can use an MSD or max grip forceps to unfold it. And then with the with the mushroom or a or a second instrument, I tuck it into the bag. So this this is the fiber free version. You can either stick it in the sulcus or in the bag. I chose to put it in the bag in this case. So cosmetically, the it looks uh, it looks pretty good. And when patients have brown iris, so you know it it uh, it actually matches the uh, other eye very well. The price of the standard brown one is about $2,000, about uh, 1 lakh rupees. Uh, the custom made one is about $8,000 where they take photographs of the other eye and, and do it. Uh, and uh, so that's about roughly about 4 lakh rupees for the other eye for a custom made prosthesis. Now going on to uh, another case. Vignesh, can we can we discuss a little about the first one? Because when we finish off, we we'll don't remember all these things. Is that okay? Sure, sure, sure. We have, sir. Time. We have time, no problem. Yeah, so, yeah, sure. Uh, now the first case, uh, there was iris all around, is it not? There is. There is iris all around, and the big, and this, just because it is fixed pupil, you wanted to reduce the size of the pupil. Correct. Yeah. Because so, this patient uh, had a severe glare. Glare. Yeah. So, so um, you have you implant the IOL first, and then this one, is it? Correct. Correct. So this has to come over the IOL. So the IOL. have you ever tried putting this one first and then getting the IOL into the bag? No, the problem, the problem with that, uh, sir, is, is the is the aperture of the pupil is fixed at 3.3 millimeters. Okay, okay. So it'll be difficult so to get, in, that, get this IOL in. Yes. So because of that, you want to put the IOL first. You want to put the CTR first. If you're putting it in the bag, you want to put the CTR first to expand the bag. Yeah, then yeah. put the IOL and then put the uh, iris prosthesis on top of it. Okay, and you refined it to what size did you refine it to? Nine point? I I defined it to ten millimeters. Ten millimeters. Okay. Yeah. So, do you change it for any uh, you know in large eyes or myopic eyes? It has to be different. Correct. Anything like that? Correct. I do. Okay. So, what happens is you know for for capsular bag placement or sulcus placement, ten millimeters should be a standard size should be enough. In fact, here this model I could have even placed it in the capsular bag. But I thought uh, in, in the sulcus, you know, but I just chose to put it in the capsular bag just to try something different. Okay, so that will remain just behind the iris, supported by no, the remnants of the remnant iris already, which is there. Okay. Correct. Correct. And resting on the uh, resting on the anterior capsule. Yeah. Do they provide this in India also? Can we order from India also? I think so, you know, because the company which uh, the company that 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 supplies it here is called Spectrum Surgical or Human Optics, and, and there are now a few other German companies that are that are producing this as well. Morcher, Morcher kind of people? Uh, not Morcher. Uh, it's mainly Human Optics. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll carry on. Yeah. So I'll I'll go on to the next case. Now this case. Here you can see that there is no iris whatsoever. You know, this patient had a, a penetrating eye injury and uh, in fact, he lost all of his uh, iris completely.
So here, I uh, he had quite high astigmatism of about four diopters of astigmatism. So what I'm planning to do is to implant a scleral fixated toric in trochlear lens, and then on, on top of it, uh, you know, use an iris prosthesis as well. Let me just go back to the video. So what I'm doing is I'm making a peritomy there, and I'm marking, you know, I've marked the toric marks here. Let me pause the video. So these are the toric marks, the implantation axis of the toric. And I'm just going to mark 1.5 millimeters from the limbus uh, and three millimeters from the limbus. So 1.5 there and one, another 1 1.5 in the back. So I've inserted the vitrectomy uh, troca cannulas and I'm just uh, doing a thorough a core and peripheral vitrectomy. So here I'm actually scleral fixating an Invista, a portion lumb Invista toric in trochlear lens with Gore-Tex. I, I, I amputate the haptics off. This is a 23, 23 gauge forceps. This is a 25 gauge max grip. 25. You, we could either use MST 23 gauge max grip or 25 gauge max grip. So I'm just using a 25 gauge because then the, the sclerostomies are quite small. So now you have passed these two through that uh, through the two 1.5 and the three millimeter uh, sclerotomies which you have created. Correct. Uh, and we, I pass it through the eyelet on the Invista lens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm just, I'm just and I'm just suturing it using a sliding slip knot. So this is a good case to to implant a, a, a toric lens. You know when we when we have to suit scleral fixate a toric lens. So but through a 25, gauge, 25 gauge, this knot goes in through the 25 gauge, is it? It goes in very nicely. So yeah. Okay. And what we have 25. to do is we have to make sure that we actually rotate the knot into the eye. Otherwise, it will cause a melt of the sclera and conjunctiva around. If you leave the Gore-Tex knot exposed on okay. the surface. And how do you uh, prevent tilt of these lenses? Sometimes when the haptics are not there, and when you tighten, uh, if it's a little too tight, this lens twists or tilts. So Correct. adjustment, yeah. So that's why we use a sliding slip knot, you know, because when you do a sliding slip knot, you can adjust the tension on both sides before you lock the suture off. Before, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So it's a one, one, one sliding slip knot. And now first what I'm one doing and second one, first one and second one in the same direction, and the last one to um, lock it. No, sir. Uh, no, first one is a normal cross. Second one is where the the uh, suture goes over the needle holder. Not the, the needle holder is, does not come within the throw. It it comes above it. Like oh. how we you know like like how we lock the last suture. We do it as a second step. Ah, oh, okay. And now what I'm doing uh, is I'm going to now play, do another sclerotomy, you know, two millimeters from the limbus, but four millimeters apart, so that then I can put the artificial iris with the fiber. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring the white to white, uh, the vertical white to white, and you minus 0 0.5 millimeters from that. And then again, we have to take, uh, you know, make sure that we press the uh, to find with the Mufields so that you don't get, you know, you don't get a cut which is haphazard there. So now I'm passing the, the CV8 Gore-Tex suture. This is a 7-0 seven, seven Gore-Tex. 7-0 Gore-Tex, yes. 
So you have to make sure that you're at least one millimeter from the edge because you don't want it, you don't want the suture at the edge. And I use the, I use the boundary of the pupil as a, as a guide. And likewise, I do the same from the other side. Again, it's all a 25 gauge max grip. And you can actually see the toric lenses along that axis very nicely. And this one, we can just fold it and we have to extend the wound to about four to 4.5 millimeters. The only thing with this the only thing with this technique is you see these two white lines, you know, there. But I think you know after what the patient's gone through, that should you know uh, that should be fine. And I'm just closing the conjunctiva with glue. So, any questions from this case? This is fantastic. This is fantastic skill. So, only thing is, why did you go two millimeters and why did you go three millimeters for the other one? So I have seen people go uh, from, from the uh, blue white junction, one millimeter behind that, and then one more millimeter, or even, uh, even uh, you usually go vertically 1.5 and three, rather than the same two millimeters uh, on either on adjacent to each other that you don't do no. for the sutures like this, what you did for the, uh, this one, the no, iris sir. implant. This one I did, uh, I did 1.5 and three. Normally, when I do Gotex, I do uh, two millimeters. Uh, no, uh, now I do three millimeters from the limbus, four uh, and two sclerotomies, four millimeters apart. Two point five to three millimeters from the limbus, four millimeters apart. But now, when you're doing a toric, uh, when you're doing a scleral fixation of a toric lens, you want the suture to line up with the axis. You know, so that's why I do one point five and three radially rather than along the limbus. Yeah, that is that is perfect. Yeah. So now I'll go on to the next case. How long follow up do you have for that case? These cases I have uh, uh, six uh, six to nine months follow up now. You know, I started doing this only in the last nine to twelve months. Okay, okay. Yeah, we'll see the next. Yeah. So this is a case where, again. Uh, uh, you know, injury with, with just, you know, with the, there is no lens uh, penetrating eye injury again. There's just this strand of iris there. And this was something that I could not salvage with any kind of uh, pupiloplasty or anything at all. So this was my third case. So now what I've done is I've, uh, because I found that the refractive error is much more predictable when you're three millimeters behind limbus. So I'm, I'm now marking three millimeters from limbus and uh, these marks are, you know, uh, four millimeters apart. So two millimeters on either side. So vitrectomy, complete vitrectomy has to be done, is it, for all these? No, sir. In fact, this case already had previous vitrectomy done. This case had previous vitrectomy, vitreolensectomy at the time of the of the blunt eye injury. Okay. You know, he had blunt eye injury, so they did, uh, you know, vitreolensectomy, complete everything, but they just left the... Uh, they just left the iris stump like that because they, you know, they could, they could, they didn't want to mess around. So when they did the primary repair, they did it and then sent it to me for surgery. But so, in fact, we can do this case with the AC maintainer very nicely. You don't need a vitrectomy setup at all. 
you know, but I just set it up as vitrectomy because in case it falls down or things like that, then I'm, at least I'm there to pick, I can pick it up at the same time because I was also learning with these cases. You know, this was only my third case. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm showing yeah. you, I'm showing you the cases in the order that I did them. The first case was my first ever Iris case. My second case was my second case. This was my third case. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually cutting off that stump, but I'm having, I have the intraocular diathermy on, uh, you know, on standby, just so that if, if the iris bleeds or anything, I can use the intraocular diathermy to, to uh, cauterize the stump. So in this case, I wanted to do something different. So again, I take the trifine, I, you know, you press on it with the move fields to get a nice circle here that the iris sticks to the uh, trifine. And here I'm using a Physiol Micropure lens. So all I do is I put a drop of uh, saline. So the iris nicely sticks to the lens. And I'm now passing the Gore-Tex suture through the eyelets, but in incorporating the iris also at the same time. The iris and the you know the uh, uh, the hole in the uh, in the haptic. It's something similar to the Acrios AO, but this is a physiol uh, you know micropure lens which is hydrophobic. So I thought uh, you know because doing uh, do because we do vitreoretinal surgery, I uh, prefer to use a hydrophobic lens. So that's why I I, I moved to this platform rather than the Acrios. So now I'm implanting both the, uh, you know, both the uh, the cortex fixated complex of uh, the the artificial iris and the micropure lens in one complex. The the critic that I would uh, critic myself with this case is maybe I should have gone I shouldn't have gone three millimeters I should have gone two millimeters because then it look exactly like a, a 1.5 or 2, so that then it look exactly like the normal iris. Because I went 3, I had to pull the sutures a bit tight. And when you look at this patient on the street lamp, you can see that there is a gap between the uh, his his normal iris and the, and the pupil. Normal, uh, the art, normal iris, the remnants, and the artificial pupil. And, and here I've again used glue to stick it down. So any questions at all from, from this case? No, this is not looks so simple and easy with you. I can't believe that it is your second case or third case. Uh, yeah. Looks so clean, and and uh, this this basically three millimeters means you are close to pass plana. So I am. That, yeah. uh, I, so uh, in fact, because I was learning on these cases myself, you know, uh, if I had to do this case now, I would go only two millimeters from the limbus because then the iris will sit at two. The uh, the IOL will sit at about two point five. Okay. And here and so there is no need for a, a iridectomy, is it not? The kind of you know some opening on the iris, no. Because no need be for iridectomy around. because one there is it's a completely vitrectomized eye, so there is no vitreous to cause pupil block, and second is there is there is a lot of space for uh, you know for the aqueous to move around. Uh, yeah, because the edge is always know, the, free. The edges are not stuck anywhere. So there will be definitely no. gap between the edges. Yeah. Correct. So then uh, this was my the next case was my fourth case. So this time I watched Ike Ahmed's video where he did, uh, you know, uh, where he did a case of uh, of fixating the uh, the Zeiss CT Lucia on the Yamane technique to the iris. Sorry, Viknesh, we, we will need to stop in four minutes. Sure, sir. Sure. I will, I will play the video very quickly. So I'm marking like yeah, the Yamane. Please carry on. Please talk on. Yeah. Yeah, I'm marking like the Yamane and then I'm making a six millimeter scleral tunnel. So I won't bore you with these details. So, and he's also got an epiretal membrane. So I did the vitrectomy for the epiretal membrane at the same time. The Yamane I, marking is two millimeters, is it not? Two millimeters behind? Two millimeters, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
So both these, uh, these, are, these are two millimeters and two millimeters. So I'm now bending the needle. This is a 30 gauge needle? 30 gauge, 30 yeah. Gauge, yeah. 30, 30 gauge TSK needle from Japan. So this is a custom made iris prosthesis. It made according to the other eye. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking a 15 degree blade, you know, and I'm making two slits one millimeter apart. And the, so I'm making a belt loop in the iris so that I can pass the blue haptics through that. Passing the second haptic is slightly tricky because you think the haptic is going to break, but because the CT Lucia lens is so good. Is the it's, haptic it's, PVDF or here? Is it a PVDF haptic or? PVDF, PVDF. Yeah, yeah. Then won't break. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So now I'm putting this and I'm just, do, I'm, I'm securing the wound and I'm then, and I'm then just doing a Yamane for this technique. Let me just show you. And I've already actually secured the other side and I've already burnt off the haptic on the other side. And so that's it. So this is how the case looks at the end. And I just suture this clear tunnel because it's quite big. So I secured it with the Yamane on both sides. And that's it from my side. That was terrific. And the first haptic going in, maybe would have been little difficult, is it not? First haptic uh, getting getting it through I, the needle. I will show you that. Uh, I'll show you that. So here, it's here. In fact, that's why I put a stay suture there, and I had to use the biome to actually look at it. The haptic is anterior to the iris uh, processes or posterior? The anterior, no, the tip. The tip, no, no, it's actually posterior. I'm deforming it so much. I'm bending it so much. I'm bringing it out to the front so that I can see it and then bring it out there. Okay, okay. So that means the only the part of it in front is you can see because, uh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. It, the free part yeah. is behind the iris, correct? Correct, correct. I just put a belt loop there. This is a very difficult maneuver. Well done, well it done. Is, it uh, has to be appreciated. It's a highly complicated maneuver. Yeah, no, in fact, uh, that's why I had a stay suture there, just in case it falls down so I can cling on to dear life and pull it up. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Okay, thank you very much. That was a very good discussion as we could discuss through the case. It was nice to have you uh, and present this complicated thing. People should benefit, but the cost factor is little tough in India, but then maybe they'll charge less in India, maybe. I don't know. No, no, the cheaper alternatives are out now, sir. There are many manufacturers oh. who are coming up with this now. So okay. we should be we should be seeing it in the next year or two uh, quite uh, quite widely. The last one, what is the size you refined it to? Uh, I, again, I refined it to about, uh, I think, 10.5, if I'm not wrong. A white to white and reduce it to reduce it by 0. 0.5 to 1. A minus 0. 0.5, yes. Minus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, after Dr. Jagadish. Uh, yes, if sir. if you can wind up, you have some um, final remarks because we are yes. through time. Yeah. This was an excellent surgery done by Dr. Vinesh. Yeah. Just yeah. one question I want to ask. Is there any difference yeah. in the surgery if it's a fake eye without cataract? Your experience uh, with your eye? Yeah. No, if, if it was a fake eye without cataract, then... Uh, probably, you know, better not to do anything at, uh, at that point. It's better to combine it with cataract surgery and we can place the iris prosthesis in the sulcus. Okay. The patient is of young age and having photophobia and no yeah. cataract. Yeah. Yeah. In, that, in that case, uh, because if you, if we put this in the, uh, uh, in the sulcus, you know, it, it will, it will cause a cataract. It will, it, 
you know, you don't know uh, the, the problems that it can cause. It can cause glaucoma and what have you. Yes. So for them, usually I'd say just use a cosmetic colored contact lens. You know, uh, a cosmetic colored contact lens should should re reduce the glare. Yeah, yeah. Very true, very true. So yeah. it was a really excellent presentation, excellent surgery in a superb field. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you very yes, much. Sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vignesh. So we'll wind up this session. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank, thank you so again. much.